Today I just wanted to share with you my thoughts on the whole Killian 24 hour track thing. It's been quite an interesting project for him. Some interesting thoughts from both sides of the camp, but here are mine. As you can see, I'm out in the forest. I live here in Helsinki in Finland and it's probably like minus two degrees at the moment. It's just a little bit chilly. On that note, one second. There we go, nice warm mint tea. So I'm pretty sure that the majority of you know who Killian Jorne is. He's like an ultra runner who's very well regarded within the ultra running world, especially mountain running. He's been winning races like Hard Rock 100, UTMB, lots of other things and then just recently kind of like switched in in this coronavirus year to do like a 10k under 30 minutes and he took on doing this 24 hour track run uh, to try and beat Yanis Kouros's uh, 24 hour track record of 303 kilometers point five well it's a little bit less I don't know what it is exactly but all details here I'm gonna say the tea is warming up my fingers really nicely so that's really nice but so Killian came up with the idea to try and beat that record which you know running at the speeds I'll overlay data whilst I'm talking over here so you can have a little look but it is a pretty intense pace to do for 24 hours on a track flat monotonous it takes a brave person to take on a challenge like that or maybe we could argue that it takes a stupid person to take on a challenge like that like my friend Tony uh, not calling you stupid Tony by the way but I filmed the video about him you can see the link down below and that was a really exciting indoor 24 hours on a track but onto the topic of Killian doing it trying it first time he'd ever done it and uh, yeah, there was a lot of promotion from like ultra running world of road runners, road runners and ath uh, athletics track runners, people kind of like doubting and like throwing a lot of shame towards him. And you know, I think maybe they have a point as well, but then you've also got like the other side of the camp that know how good of an athlete he is and how well regarded he is. And that normally if he puts his mind to something he goes out there and does these great adventures and everything and there's no doubt about it that his vo2 max and his engine and his capability are there yeah just trying to give a little bit of backstory as you can see that there was like maybe a little bit of commotion some people thinking like hey who is this guy who does he think he is and then a lot of people on the other side of the camp who are kind of like Wow, go Killian, you know, you rock, mate. So how the story unfolded, maybe you've watched a live stream. Solomon had a great live stream. You can go and check it out if you want to. Some nice bedtime viewing there for you. But uh, Killian stopped after like 10 and a half hours uh, due to some dizziness and maybe vomiting. Not all fully unfolded yet. And he ended up doing 134 kilometers. He was all above world record pace. I think he did his first marathon sub three hours, which is like astronomical if you're thinking about trying to do that for 24 hours. And uh, yeah, he was started off ahead and on probably his goal. Maybe the conditions weren't ideal, but I think even if the conditions weren't ideal, hey, that's my thought. We're saving that bit for later. So yeah. 134 kilometers on the track and then he stopped medical care and then the rest of the team who were also running they carried on there were some four of the Norwegians sorry I don't know your names guys but uh, they're very well regarded athletes by themselves I'm not in that community or like don't have so much knowledge but I'm sure many of you ultra runners or you know road ultra tra ultra road runners know what I'm talking about. So my thoughts on what Killian did, was it stupid? Was it, you know, inspirational? And as I was saying a little bit before, the conditions were a little bit less ideal, you know, minus two degrees, November in Norway. Hmm, maybe it was a bit silly to take it on upon that time, but I think Killian clearly made the judgment call that he can do it so in that sense also you can't really use that as an excuse he's been living there as well for many years so that's also something to take into consideration that he has acclimatized but mainly probably running in the mountains and doing those things there but temperature wise I don't think it should have been a problem for him I personally think maybe like it was a little bit ambitious of him I don't doubt his natural ability but with very limited kind of like experience and training and doing flat ultras uh, on a track. Mentally, I think he's got it, right? He's done lots of 35 hours in the mountains and all these, you know, UTMB. So mentally he's got what it takes to push through, but 
uh, when you just run flat, you're just using one set of rhythm, one, mus one set of mus muscle groups. So it's a little bit more challenging. I know that he probably knew that, but I think it was a little bit naive of him, if I'm being completely honest. And uh, yeah, he paid the price. But going into the flip side of that, if you don't try, you never know. And I think like 2020 has all been a bit of an experimental year for all of us. We've done things a little bit different. And I think that's the same with Killian, that he's decided, you know, take on a challenge that he wouldn't normally do. And uh, so, giving it a go, I think that's the first step always in success. People will always be there pointing a finger at you saying, ha ha, you failed, or you know, what an idiot for taking it on. But you have to try to be, you know, to be successful, otherwise you're never gonna be successful. I also think from my point of view that uh, I think it's quite clever, you know, like these brands nowadays, obviously Killian is sponsored by Solomon. They are nowadays like pushing their products through their athletes. Uh, trying to get people to inspire them to do things and it is kind of like a marketing campaign for the shoe the Solomon Phantasm it was like written everywhere it was kind of marketed as a thing and uh, as a result it kind of feels like you know Killian's a little bit of a guinea pig and they're like hey do this run it be like hamster do that you know we can get we can get more people to buy the shoe if you do something great so it's a little bit hard for him to pull out of it if it wasn't necessarily something that he didn't want to do or he didn't feel well or maybe it was less than ideal conditions but I think that's what you sign up for when you become like a sponsored athlete. I personally think it was a little bit of an ambitious stretch goal for him and uh, I don't think I didn't have so much faith in that the end result would have been the thing that he would have wanted but sometimes you need to go into things with no expectations and I'm sure Killian just went with the expectation of you know like I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna give it my best shot and I'm pretty sure he did that because like he was on by the side of the road and now he's being looked after by a medical team if this is something that he really wants I'm sure he'll be back out there trying it again I doubt that for some reason because he just loves the outdoors and being out in the mountains and exploration you know adventure sort of things rather than being a hamster going around like this over and over and over and over again Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen, I've got a shoe review because I've run in the shoes that Killian has and I've done about 100 kilometers in them. Full review down below or linked up here. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I've enjoyed filming it. I'm gonna have my tea and probably tuck into a cliff bar. Oh yeah, don't forget, like the video if you liked it and hit the subscribe button.